Now, your Storm Team 7 forecast first. Well, a very good Thursday afternoon, everyone. I'm Storm Team 7 meteorologist Malachi Rogers, and as we head to the evening hours, we have a couple of strong to severe thunderstorms to talk about. Uh, the first one over Spartanburg, northern parts of Spartanburg County towards Boiling Springs. This is slowly working its way back towards the city of Spartanburg, so it's producing a lot of lightning and gusty winds. We also have a severe thunderstorm warning over Greenville, where the biggest concern is gusty winds over 60 miles an hour. So again, you want to be careful if you're heading out this evening. Our next 12 hours will keep rain chances fairly high for the upstate through early tomorrow morning with those thunderstorms around and in western North Carolina. Our next 12 hours could be bumpy as well with thunderstorms expected. We'll take a look at what you can expect for the weekend weather coming up in our seven day forecast. Seven News at six starts now. Live and local for Carolina's family. This is seven news at six. And ahead at six, a man who went viral for a good deed has now admitted to dealing hundreds of thousands of dollars of drugs. We'll tell you about the story from hero to convict. You know, we have 85, and 85 is the biggest uh, method of transporting drugs anywhere. Eight arrests after two and a half years of investigating. Coming up, the details on the promoter drug bust. Good evening, eight people now facing charges, all tied to the murder of a woman found dead in the woods in Lawrence County. And deputies say the death of Michelle Dodge was all orchestrated behind prison bars. 7 News reporter Kirsten Glavin has been digging into this case all day. She joins us now from 7 on Main. She has the very latest for you tonight. Kirsten. Now, we first covered this murder of Michelle Dodge nearly two weeks ago when she was found shot in the back of the head in a rural wooded area in Lawrence County. But tonight we're learning her murder was not an impulsive act. Investigators believe this was a thought out plan by eight people who went to great lengths to hide the evidence. In a stunning development to the murder of a York County woman, 27 year old Michelle Dodge, eight people are now facing charges in connection to her death. These men and women are behind bars in South and North Carolina, facing charges for murder, accessory before and after the fact, kidnapping and more. But this man, James Peterson, is who investigators believe set the whole thing up. The catch is that he's already in prison, serving a 30 year murder sentence. Records obtained by 7 News show he was disciplined at least three times last year alone for possessing or attempting to possess a cell phone. Dodge was found shot in the back of the head, ditched in the woods near Eckham Beach Road on July 20th, her vehicle missing. The Dodge Charger was later discovered in a wooded area off Wolf Den Lane in Cherokee County. The sheriff saying they believe whoever ditched it was trying to get it into the Broad River or set it on fire. 7 News is told the investigation isn't over yet and that more charges are possible. And we did reach out to Michelle Dodge's family for comment tonight. We were told that the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office instructed them not to discuss this case with anyone. We are expecting to sit down with Sheriff Don Reynolds about this investigation tomorrow morning. Live at 7 on Main tonight, Kirsten Glavin, 7 News. Thank you, Kirsten. A drug dealer who went viral online after helping a group of Girl Scouts at a cookie stand has admitted to bribing a cellmate to kill a prosecutor and witness. Dietrich McGowan, also known as Fat, pleaded guilty on drug and threatening charges, and prosecutors say he was in charge of a drug ring that sold more than $1 million of drugs in the upstate. He was arrested just days after his picture of buying more than 100 boxes of Girl Scout cookies went viral. McGowan will be sentenced to at least 25 years in prison. A woman faces charges after she was hit by a train while she was driving. The Highway Patrol says it happened just after 5.30 this morning in Spartanburg at Southport Road and Whitestone Glendale Road. We're told a train was crossing, flares were in place to warn drivers. That's when troopers say the woman tried to cross, hit the train, and wound up in a ditch. She was taken to Spartanburg Medical Center. We're told she should be okay. Anytime you're going across any kind of uh, train crossing, uh, use caution. Uh, always act like there possibly could be a train there because uh, usually if you're in a motor vehicle and there's a locomotive or a train, you're not going to come out on the good side of that. The Highway Patrol charged the woman with driving under suspension, going too fast for conditions, and driving without insurance. 
Deputies in two upstate counties are investigating after a reported shooting. Greenville County deputies say they got a call last night to Green Avenue. That's close to Highway 81. We're told a car involved left the scene and deputies didn't find any victims. About 20 minutes later, Anderson County deputies say they found a similar car near Walmart in Powdersville. So far, no arrests have been announced. If you have information, call Crime Stoppers at 23 Crime. Deputies say they've arrested someone charged in an Anderson gas station shooting. The shooting happened this morning at the Sphinx on Highway 28 bypass, and now Drakus Witcher has been arrested. We know one man was shot and needed surgery. Deputies say he pulled a pistol from his waistband and fired it during an argument. He faces weapons charges and more. Eight men are behind bars and one more on the run tonight after a two-and-a-half-year investigation into drug trafficking in Oconee County. They're calling the operation The Promoter. And 7 News reporter Nicole Ford was there when the arrests were announced. She joins us now live in Walhalla with details on this investigation. Nicole? Diane, the sheriff tells me this operation began with a simple phone call from a citizen here in Oconee County concerned about illegal drugs at one home. That call led to millions of dollars of cocaine being taken off the streets. In a press conference on Thursday, Oconee County Sheriff Mike Crenshaw announced the details of a two and a half year investigation that ended with these eight men arrested and charged for trafficking illegal drugs. The sheriff says they took 61 kilos off the street, which is roughly $6.1 million. Bringing down an organized group like this may not seem like a whole lot to folks, but if these guys get some real time and get sent away for a while, um, you know, that's, that, that's going to be key. And uh, it disrupts the flow, and uh, really it does put a dent in it. You're not going to get rid of it, but it puts a dent in it. And the sheriff says there's actually a ninth suspect in this drug trafficking ring. You can see Trenton Thomas on your screen right now of Seneca. There's actually arrest warrants out for him for his involvement in this ring. You're asked if you know any information about his whereabouts to call Crime Stoppers. We're live in Wahala, Nicole Ford, 7 News. Thank you, Nicole. A man faces drug and weapon charges after a SWAT situation in Henderson County. Kendall Angram was arrested at a home on Woodcock Drive. Deputies say he had cocaine and was planning to sell it and also had a gun that he wasn't supposed to. Now he's out of jail after posting a $46,000 bond. As more stores stock their shelves with CBD oil, the Food and Drug Administration is warning consumers to be careful. Oils and edibles are not regulated by the state or the federal government as of yet, meaning it's important to do research before you make a purchase. Some products have codes that take you right to the lab work results, which verifies how much CBD is in the product. Others could expose you to hidden toxins like heavy metals, pesticides, mold, and more. I think one of the big things you have to worry about with any product that you ingest is contaminants, right? So if you're talking about something that's manufactured and there is not a set of standards for how to manufacture it, well, then you could be consuming the CBD oil, but we don't know what else is in there. The FDA is gathering data on the industry and is expected to issue regulations when formal studies on the effects of CBD oil are complete. Two infant sleepers are being recalled. They're both connected to deaths of babies. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says they are bassinets sold by the Durrell Juvenile Group. They were sold at Target, Kmart, Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and more between 2014 and 2017. Still ahead at 6, the Palmetto State is gearing up for a big census. What the governor is now doing to make sure every South Carolina resident counts come 2020. And in our weather, we continue to track severe thunderstorms over Spartanburg and Greenville counties through the evening. We'll have the very latest on this coming up when we come back. All right, Tom, this is it. Congratulations on your retirement. I've been watching you a long time on the TV. I know it's been, it's got to be 35 years. Anyway, have a great time. And one thing I'm looking forward to is retiring shortly after you do.
The United States Census Bureau gets a head count of everyone living in the country once every 10 years. And with 2020 being a census year, the state is gearing up to make sure all South Carolina residents are counted. Our Georgery Godfrey has details on a newly formed committee to make sure the state gets its numbers right. More than 50 different organizations and agencies are participating in the Complete Count Committee with the goal of reaching as many people as possible to participate in the 2020 census. Governor Henry McMaster issued the executive order to create the South Carolina 2020 Complete Count Committee Thursday morning. The committee will use joint resources and outreach to inform as many residents as possible about the upcoming census. The Census Bureau has recommended that the states form complete count committees, various types of committees, in order to be sure that we're, we're counting everyone. Now that's important for a lot of reasons, for congressional representation. As you know, we, we picked up a congressional seat recently. We hope to maybe we'll pick up another one if we're growing uh, as fast as we think we are. The federal budget of $675 billion is distributed based on numbers collected in the census. In Columbia, George R. Godfrey, 7 News. All right, a good Thursday evening, everyone. It's Tom's last show, and I wish we could give him some much better weather to send him off with, but unfortunately, we're tracking a few thunderstorms this evening. Some that are actually severe, so you want you to be careful out there as you're heading out this evening. We have a strong thunderstorm over Spartanburg County. It's severe right now, but we expect it to weaken over the next 15 minutes or so, still producing a lot of rain and lightning. So again, if you're heading out this evening up towards Boiling Springs, you want to be careful out there. And as we kind of dissect the storms to see just how tall they are, this storm is about 30,000 feet. And once they get to that level, they start producing hail that actually makes it to the ground. So we could be dealing with some quarter size hail in Boiling Springs and Chesney this evening. So please be very careful out there. We're also looking at some severe thunderstorms over the Greenville area. And again, the heaviest rain looks like it's uh, just a little bit farther to the west of Greenville near Berea, right along White Horse Road, Highway 25 in Greenville County. Another line of strong thunderstorms just now entering uh, near Clemson. You can see those just to the south, right along Interstate 85 there. And speaking Speaking of the interstates down towards Interstate 26, kind of the connection between 385 and 26 uh, near Newberry, near Clinton, near Lawrence. We have some strong thunderstorms as well. It's a wet evening across the upstate and western North Carolina. As we take a live look over Morgan Square, downtown Spartanburg, 80 degrees. The good news is that with the rain, things are a little bit cooler. We're in the 70s and 80s right now, but unfortunately, we keep those rain chances up and not just rain, the possibility of thunderstorms through our evening hours in the upstate and in Western North Carolina, where temperatures will fall to the lower 70s. So taking a look at our weather headlines, hot and humid weather once again in the forecast, more of these scattered storms around the next few days, but milder temperatures in the weekend. It's actually because the clouds are coming in a little bit earlier. It's still going to be hot and humid. High temperatures tomorrow, mid 80s in the upstate, upper 70s in Western North Carolina. But the timing brings those thunderstorms again through the afternoon on your Friday. So overnight, we'll see the rain come to an end around sunset. Dry weather through the overnight hours. Dry weather early on your Friday morning, 7 a.m. It's dry, a little bit of cloud cover, but calm and comfortable. As we head into the afternoon, that's where we crank up the showers, crank up those thunderstorms. The good news is that tomorrow's thunderstorms will be pushed in by a pretty strong southeasterly wind. So although the storms will start around 3 to 5 o'clock, they will quickly get pushed back into western North Carolina. So if you have Friday evening plans, I think you're in good shape, especially in the upstate, as those thunderstorms should start to move out later in the day. Our next 72 hours will include chances for rain Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No washouts, but we're watching for those thunderstorms heading into the weekend. Rain still around on Monday, but much drier weather and sunny skies head our way Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday for both the upstate and the mountains. Thanks, Malachi. And still ahead at six, Clemson gets a high honor and USC dials in on the season ahead. Pete's in next with that. And Cam Newton talks about the status of his comeback from a shoulder issue all coming up in sports. Well, Tom, I can't believe you're going to do this to us, but you certainly deserve uh, your retirement. I hope you find meaning and I hope you find enjoyment and fulfillment in this next chapter of your life. God bless you, my friend.
Clemson's the number one team in the preseason coaches poll for the first time in program history. The reigning national champs picked out of Alabama and Georgia. Tigers were number two in 2016 and 2018 and fifth in the 2017 preseason. Good evening, everybody. Now, as the Tigers and USC begin practice on Friday, the Gamecocks visiting with the media this afternoon, and that's where we find Todd Summers. Good evening, everyone. The Gamecocks begin fall practice coming up tomorrow. Today, we had a chance to go one on one with a bunch of different key players, including head coach Will Muschamp. Now, one of the topics of conversation that everybody seems to be focused on is the schedule that the Gamecocks will play this season. The coaches poll came out today and South Carolina will play number one, number two, number three and the number eight team in the nation. So the challenge is great. But according to these guys, so too is the opportunity. When you look at that schedule, what do you tell you? Opportunity for greatness. Embrace it. It's going to be awesome to play on the biggest stage in college football multiple weeks throughout the season, and, and we're excited about it. Me, personally, I don't really look at the schedule and go by the schedule and everybody be like, oh, you got to play Bama, you got Clemson. I, I, but I, I want it. I saw Bama on the schedule, and I'm, I'm ready to play. Prior to today's media session, we were told to limit the questions to players that are on the roster that they handed out. Unfortunately for us, on this roster, the name Tavian Feaster is not listed. Perhaps we will hear from the former Spartanburg High Star and Clemson Tiger at some point in the near future once he arrives on campus. In Columbia, Todd Summers, 7 Sports. Elsewhere, both Luke Keekley and Cam Newton took it easy today's Panthers practice. Afterward, the QB talking about coming back from his shoulder issue and how there's work still to be done. It's a process. I don't want people to, to just assume, oh, Cam's back. You know, I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that I'm able to practice and the capabilities that I know I can and this team expects me to be. Cam has a new throwing motion. The ball club also re-signed safety Trey Boston. Well, Spartanburg High is getting a spiffy new high school and a nice stadium to go with it, but they announced today their originally scheduled home opener August 30th against Greer has been moved to the Yellow Jackets home field. The home opener will now be played on the 27th of September. Our high school red zone team previews continue tonight. What an odd season it was a year ago for Woodmont. They started 0-4, won five in a row, found themselves playing for the Region 1-5A crown. Jake Fernicola and Cam Donald return up front for Jet Turner's team. They've had a quarterback battle between Dalton Bess and Nathan Mercer, but certainly have a whole lot of momentum coming in with running backs like Josh Komodo returning after the finish they had a year ago. It takes a while to, to develop that mentality and uh, uh, you could see it coming. Like I said, I, around the uh, Greenwood game, you, you, we, we felt like, you know, we, we played well, we didn't win, but but you saw we were we were right there. And on defense, they've got impact players like Ty Singletary and Porkchop Drummond, but Jet Turner has won everywhere he's been. He continues to do that at Woodmont. Of course, our season preview show coming up August 17th. Finally, Furman introducing its new athletic director today, Jason Donnelly. He replaces Mike Buddy. He most recently was in the administration at Villanova. The news returns in a moment with a very special final segment. Congratulations on your retirement, Tom. I'm so very proud of the career that you've had over the last 45 years in broadcasting, and I'm really looking forward to us being able to spend more time together.
Well, the day has come, <laughs> and I'm already about to cry. <laughs> Forty-five years uh, in the business, more than 35 here at Channel 7. And uh, in between tears here, I want you to meet my family. This is my wife, Gail, my daughter, Kayla, my daughter, Lauren. Beside her is my son-in-law, Alex. And here but behind Kayla is her boyfriend, uh, Richard. This is uh, my family, uh, my traditional family. But all around me here is all these great people from Channel 7 who have been my uh, TV family and uh, as good as family for all these years. Uh, I just can't say enough how much I love them, what great people all of you are. It takes a lot of people to put on a newscast. We certainly don't do it by ourselves, those of us who are seen uh, on camera. There are so many people, and you see them here, who work behind the scenes to make all of this possible. And I'm, I'm just indebted to every single one of you for the ter terrific professionalism you show and the uh, friendship you have shared with me every single day. And. Uh, I don't know, we, we uh, in broadcasting, a lot of people don't get to retire this way. It, it's, a, it, it's a business that can be volatile at times. And uh, I'm highly blessed to be able to uh, go out this way. We've had a great month around here. We've been talking about this <laughs> for a month preceded by years of our planning for our family. So this is all very, very planned. Diane, I've been highly honored by the uh, stories that you've done this week about my career, as, as you can see, there's been a lot going on with that career in all these years. And, and folks at home, how very kind you have been to me and to my family and to all of us for watching each night. You know, where I grew up in uh, Hillsboro, North Carolina, out in the middle of nowhere, you got three channels. And uh, you were lucky to get those three. What do we get today, folks? Hundreds. Uh, anytime you choose to watch us, it means more than it ever has. And I'm, I'm deeply grateful because any success we have had is largely thanks to you. I truly do appreciate it. You may have, you may have noticed um, over the years I've been wearing an, an American flag lapel pin. Uh, these pins were passed out after 9-11. And I have worn mine continuously, not this particular one, but one like it, ever since 9-11 happened. I'm very grateful to the management of our company for allowing me to do that. Um, Guys, Malachi, this is for you. Thank you, Tom. I hope you'll that. wear that as you see appropriate. Pete, this one Thank is you, for you. You're looking at me wondering what's <laughs> next. No, no, I know what I got. I got a back scratcher earlier. Oh, you went up near there. Oh. This one, Diane. Now, Tom, you're going to make me cry. This is for you. Thank you. Um, I'm so honored. I'm honored. Thank you so much. It has been such a tremendous pleasure working with you. You are a stand-up man, and he is just like he is off air, on air, a good right. person, kind heart, and a wonderful person to know, a Thank good friend. Thank you so much. The, these are wonderful people. Please continue to watch Channel 7 and give it all your support. And I'll yeah. miss them. I'll miss you. But I'm looking forward to the beach. <laughs> 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 we love you, Tom.